Uh, as Suzanne said, then almost exactly a year ago, in a similar hall to this one, we had a similar meeting. But that time it was titled, Marx was right, capitalism in crisis, the case for socialism. And it's not a coincidence that tonight's meeting has a kind of more equivocal title. Is the capitalist crisis over? Has capitalism recovered from the crisis? Capitalism is a blind, unplanned system. One of the things that Marx explained 150 years ago is that it's a system that's driven, in essence, by the need to make profits, by the bottom line. And those profits, when it comes down to it, come from the exploitation of the working class. And when we met last year, in Britain, there'd been plenty of profits, up until literally weeks before we met. There'd been 16 years of uninterrupted growth. And our party was almost a lone voice saying this cannot go on forever. Capitalism is a cyclical system. It always has periods of crisis. But in addition to that, the nature of the growth we had over those 16 years, which was largely fueled by huge bubbles in the stock markets, in house prices, by personal indebtedness. I mean, even now, a year after the crisis began, the debt overhang in Britain, individual consumers, what we owe, is £1.5 trillion. Pounds, an enormous amount of money. So we kept the economy going by running up debts on our credit cards, by remortgaging our houses, and all of the rest of it. And we warned that it couldn't continue to forever. And the nature of the growth that had gone before meant that when crisis came, then that crisis would be severe and prolonged. But for the capitalists, as long as they were making profits, they didn't care. There was the odd commentator who might say, oh, maybe it won't last forever. But in general, they believed all the rubbish, which was put at its most crudely by Gordon Brown himself, who used to say, that he personally had abolished boom and bust, that capitalism would never have another crisis again. So at the time when we met last year, reality had come crashing down on the spokespeople and the representatives of world capitalism. Literally, they were in shock at the scale of the crisis. And I don't know how many of you have watched some of the TV programmes about it, the different dramatisations of the collapse of Lehman Brothers in the US, what went on in the stock markets and all the rest of it. But it confirms everything we discussed at the time. They were standing on the edge of an abyss. They were watching their world spiral out of control. It came to the point in Britain where they were hours away from you not being able to draw money out of the cash machines. And they had to step in and part nationalise the banks. Otherwise, literally, you would have had people, not just with Northern Rock, but every bank, queuing up in panic because they weren't able to get access to their monies. So when we discussed, they were all in shock. And it was quite common, actually, in the newspapers to have articles by capitalists saying Marx was right, because they were so horrified by what was taking place in their system. What's the situation now, a year on? Well, one of the other things which Marx said, which is still very relevant today, is that no social system, including capitalism, departs the scene of history of its own accord. And until the majority of people, the working class and the poor, decide to act to get rid of capitalism and to build a democratic socialist society, until we get to that point, they will always find a way to recover from the crisis. But the way that they recover is at the expense of the working class. I'll talk about it more later on in this introduction. But we are currently witnessing what seems like one of the biggest contracts in history, or in British history anyway, where we've got a big public budget deficit, which has come about as a result of the economic crisis and the bailing out of the banks. And yet every newspaper, <coughs> Every capitalist politician is talking on and on about how it's the profligate public sector, how it's public sector workers and public services that will have to pay for the crisis that is taking place. So as far as they're concerned, the road to economic recovery, as it always is with capitalism, comes down to what Marx called the destruction of value, of factories closing, uh, economic production stopping, never to return again in many cases, but also over the living standards, the public services, the jobs of the working class. It's us 
that's expected <coughs> to pay for the crisis. But has it worked? Are we back in a period of economic growth? There are constant articles in the press about green shoots of recovery. But they do tend to get contradicted a week or two later. They're kind of very tentative, what they're saying at the moment, about the possibility of economic recovery. We should be clear. Last year, world capitalism, not just in Britain but globally, faced an economic crisis which could have been worse than the Great Depression that took place in the 1930s. The dominance of finance, globalisation, meant that there was the threat of a worse Great Depression than that took point at that point in time. As a result of an enormous effort by governments globally to step in and bail out the banks and the finance system, they have managed to avoid that, that catastrophe that they were facing. Instead of a Great Depression, we have a Great Recession. But it's come at a big price. In Britain, it's estimated it's £1.2 trillion that have been spent, taxpayers' money in essence, <coughs> bailing out the finance and the banking sector. That is equivalent to a week's worth of global GDP, that what's produced in the world for a week, that has been used to bail out Britain's finance sector. And of course, while they've managed to avoid a Great Depression, the recession is still going on. It's not over yet. There have been reports of manufacturing stuttering back into life, but it's only parts of manufacturing. And a lot of it has come from the fact that uh, they, they slashed inventories, they ran down stocks, and so they reached a point where they had to start to produce some stuff again. So that's one reason. But a lot of the rest of it is in areas like car production, short-term measures that the government has taken, the cash for banger schemes, which leads to people buying cars for a bit, but it's not necessarily <coughs> going to lead to a permanent change in the situation. And to mix a the metaphor, then overall, the supposed slight growth in manufacturing, the green shoots of stalled manufacturing is not, at this point in time, overall growing. So and jobs in manufacturing are still being shared. And so all the optimists in the press have got to cling to is things like an article I read in The Guardian earlier this week pointing out that more people are buying finest products from Tesco's again. You know, that's kind of, that's the limit. A little bit of an increase in some <coughs> consumer spending. People staying in on a Saturday night but buying themselves a bit of a nicer pizza than they were before for the growth in the economy. Um, the other thing they're pointing is the fact there's a tiny increase in the price of houses again. But there's a, also a tiny number of houses being sold at the moment. There are very few houses on the market. So that doesn't necessarily represent that much. Now we should be clear, at a certain point, 